Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, meeting organizers for uh, permitting me to talk. Um, obviously, there must have been some kind of error because I'm a urologist. <laughs> so this is like an Alcoholics Anonymous type of thing. I think I should say something like I haven't taken out the prostate in like two weeks. <laughs> So the title of my talk is uh, Fixing Broken Eggs, which is imagery about uh, what I believe is going on in a uh, patient's life when they get a diagnosis of bad prostate cancer. And uh, most of my patients look at me kind of with the idea that I'm going to somehow be able to put the yolk back in the egg. And I actually brought my parents to this talk. They're in the back of the room there. They've never seen me speak. And I just want to make it very clear that the objective is not to create a livelihood. The objective is not to sell drugs or to uh, do procedures. The objective is singularly to fix prostate cancer for the individual that walks through the room. So my particular clinic is uh, fairly focused on advanced treatment of advanced disease, and I'll walk you through that. Dr. Scholz actually asked me to talk a little about C11 choline PET scanning, so I've kind of woven that into the, my talk, and it won't all be about immunotherapy. Before I give my talk, I have to give disclosure. I myself and Mayo Clinic have received licensing and royalty payments for B7H-related intellectual properties. These are things that we invented, and some of these things have been sold to Medirex, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Amplimune, and Medimmune. I can guarantee you that I have not received sufficient funds to buy one uh, tank full of gas for my car in the state of California. <clears throat> At the Mayo Clinic, we have a pretty phenomenal operation. Uh, we see roughly 22,000 prostate cancers annually, just in Rochester alone. 2,200 patients come to my clinic every year. And as a minimum requirement, those patients have typically failed prostatectomy, radiation, proton beam therapy, minimally invasive therapies, as well as hormone therapy and chemotherapy. Most of the patients have rapidly rising PSA. Many of the patients are highly symptomatic, and we categorize these patients as failure patients. And typically, a patient comes to me with a, quite a desperate look, and they are seeking advice regarding management and treatment of their very advanced and aggressive cancer. So I'm not the brightest guy on the planet. I try to simplify the problem right off the bat, and one of the first things I do is I try to categorize the patient into one of two categories. I try to categorize the patient as either having category one, which is a focal failure, that is a little bit of cancer coming back in one or two spots in the body, versus a patient that has systemic failure, and that is like cancer spread like fine dust all over the body. In order to make this kind of stratification of patients, I typically use something called C11 choline PET scan, and this is not the same PET scanning that you heard about earlier today. So I'll walk you through a little bit about how we handle patients with focal prostate cancer failure. These are patients that, for instance, fail hormone therapy and surgery and so forth. PSA is rising. Now, I alluded to C11 choline PET scan. C11 choline PET scan is predicated on use of choline. And choline is a naturally occurring substance. It is an essential nutrient. It's grouped with B-complex B vitamins. It's essential for maintaining cell membrane structure cell signaling, and synthesis of neurotransmitters and general metabolism. C11 choline is an artificial form of choline that's been modified to undergo beta decay to fire out a positron that can be seen by positron emission tomography. C11 choline is really weird. It's rapidly taken up by prostate cancer cells. It's highly specific and it will be taken up by those cells whether they are located inside the prostate or outside the prostate. C11 choline PET scanning yields images of metabolically alive prostate tumor sites as opposed to just showing you something that is abnormal, whether it harbors live or dead tumor cells. So I have some examples. These are the typical kind of patients that I see in my clinic. 
This is a 72-year-old male who first came to me in November 2010. He had his prostate taken out by one of the prostate snatchers, and he was placed on Lupron and Casodex for one year because he had disease outside of the prostate. When he arrived uh, coming to me, he had a PSA of 0.53. He was asymptomatic. He had negative bone scan, MRI, CT. I obtained a C11 choline PET scan with the idea being that I might be able to see an area of me metabolic activity, and we feel failed to see anything at this time, but that's not surprising. PSA was very low. I instructed the patient to come back in March 2011, and his PSA was 1.9. Patient had undergone several surgical procedures, including bilateral hip replacement. At the time of his C11 choline PET scan, he had a hot spot on his lumbar vertebrae. I began arguing with everyone in my department, as well as everyone else at Mayo, saying, I think that's where the cancer is coming back. Everyone said, no, this could be artifact of some kind of injury related to his recent surgeries. In July 2011, patient came back with a PSA of 17.9, very aggressive disease, very rapid rising PSA. Repeat C11 choline PET scan revealed three hot spots in the lumbar vertebrae. These were not seen by MRI, CT, or bone scan. At that point, all of my colleagues agree that this was probably the site of recurrence and the site that could have been maybe targeted for therapy in March 2011. So this is just an example of how we use C11 choline PET scan. Here's another example, very standard generic garden variety case. 52-year-old male, stas post prostatectomy, has prostate taken out, is placed on Lupron case dex for two years because he had disease outside of his prostate. He came to me with a rapidly rising PSA, very aggressive, persistently rising, while on hormone therapy. This is hormone refractory disease. I got an endorectal coil MRI on this patient, and we saw lymph nodes that were swollen up in his pelvis. Got a C11 choline PET scan, and it showed one, two, and three very metabolically active nodes down in the pelvis. I postulated that this guy's prostate cancer recurrence, hormone refractory, is entirely located within his prostate. I advised the patient to undergo extended lymphadenectomy to have all of the lymph nodes taken out of his pelvis. Patient decided that that might be a good idea, and he was taken to surgery, and immediately he had a decline in his PSA from 2.4 and rising to zero, undetectable, and he's still zero at three and six months. This is an example of hormone refractory metastatic prostate cancer that has been identified by C11 choline PET scan and surgically addressed with excellent control.